Welcome to the Fun Astrology and Merriman Market Analyst Weekend Financial Report. I'm Thomas Miller reading the free weekly newsletter from MMACycles.com written every Friday evening and released on the website. And we talk about it over the weekend. It's for the week beginning June 24th, written by Ray Merriman, financial astrologer for over 50 years and market timing specialist and advisor to many through his various publications. Again, you can find this newsletter on the website, MMACycles.com, up at the free newsletter tab. Getting started with a couple of news stories for this week. First of all, from Friday, CNBC.com. Wall Street's climb to record highs has come with conspicuously little volatility. The S&P 500 has gone 377 days without a 2.05% sell-off. That is the longest stretch for the benchmark since the great financial crisis, according to fact-set data compiled by CNBC. The index hasn't experienced a gain of at least 2.15% in that time either. And this is from a Wall Street Journal article on Monday. The 21% U.S. corporate tax rate is the biggest single variable in the sprawling 2025 tax debate. And the two parties are trying to turn that dial in opposite directions with major consequences for companies' profits and federal revenue. The rate could climb as high as 28% if the Democrats sweep November's elections and move as low as 15% if the Republicans gain full power. End quote. And now, Ray's commentary. He says you don't see a full moon on the summer solstice very often, but it happened this past week. And as the seasons change during the current full moon, financial markets may also be setting up for a change of trend. Both a change of season and a full moon are often associated with sudden changes of trend, although most of the time these trend changes are short-lived. However, since it is getting late in the cycles of some markets like stocks, any change of trend is liable to be longer than just a few days. The later a bull market is in its cycle, the more vulnerable it is to a sudden reversal to the bottom of that cycle. In the case of U.S. stocks, we note that it is very late in their four-year cycles. In fact, in only two cases in the last 130 years has the four-year U.S. stock market cycle topped out past the 49th month after it began. June 2024 is now 51 months following the four-year cycle low of March 2020. Most of the world's stock indices are mired in congestion over the past two months. The notable exceptions are the NASDAQ and S&P in the United States and the Nifty Index of India, which each made new all-time highs late last week. China's Shanghai Composite may be an exception, too, because it dropped to its lowest level in five weeks on Friday. Still, divergences continue to mount as these few indices make new all-time highs unconfirmed by new all-time highs in other indices in their region. As mentioned previously, this is a concern because it is late in their longer-term cycles, and divergences like this are often bearish signals. It's as if a storm is forecasted and the clouds are beginning to gather on the horizon. Plus, we are moving from soft, harmonious aspects of Jupiter to Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto between April and June, and into a nine-month series of hard, square aspects from Jupiter to Saturn starting in August. With Jupiter in the air sign of Gemini now, the winds of change could soon pick up their force. Gold and silver were interesting again as both had smart rallies all week that suddenly ended on Friday. This was yet another score for the new MMA Solar Lunar Reversal app, which issued a buy signal from a low in gold on June 13th when it dropped to 23.10.90, and then a sell signal from a high on June 21st as prices reached 23.82.60, the weekly high. By the close on Friday, gold was near 23.30. However, we do have another buy indicator arising the next 10 days as we approach Neptune turning retrograde, and we'll talk about that in the next section. In other markets, crude oil soared to a new multi-week high of 81.78 on Friday, 
confirming its primary cycle trough at 72.40 back on June 4th. Bitcoin, on the other hand, exhibited weakness, dropping to a low of 63,274 on Friday. It's nearing important support as Saturn turns retrograde, conjoining Uranus in Bitcoin's first trade chart next weekend. And that orb of influence is already in play. Now, the short-term geocosmics section, a quote from Friday's Wall Street Journal. Home prices rose in May to a new high, with low inventory continuing to spur bidding wars among home buyers in some markets. Those high prices, paired with elevated mortgage rates, have limited the number of sales this spring, typically the busiest season for home buying. Sales of previously owned homes decreased 0.7% from the prior month, the third straight monthly decline. On an annual basis, existing home sales, which make up most of the housing market, fell 2.8%. Even though demand is low, home prices are still rising because high mortgage rates are deterring potential sellers from listing their homes, keeping the supply of homes on the market lower than normal. End quote. Now Ray's comments. We now switch seasons, literally. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, this is the period of the longest days of the year and known as summer solstice. It also begins the sun sign of cancer in Western astrology, which traditionally rules the home and family, and by extension, the nurturing and protection of loved ones, or even country, as in patriotism. Cancer is a water sign, which pertains to emotions, as opposed to Gemini, the sun sign we are leaving, which is an air sign, and hence more cerebral. Cancer's nature is also defensive rather than offensive. A more pronounced offensive focus is due in the following month, when we enter the fire sign of Leo on July 22nd. For now, investors, and people in general, may lean more to being defensive in their approach to finances, politics, and all relationships, be it professional or personal. The defensive posturing of investors may be heightened this week as first Saturn and then Neptune turn retrograde on June 29th and July 2nd, respectively. Saturn, like Cancer, is more cautious and careful in judgment than most signs. It is less aggressive by nature more like a wall that resists force. Thus, when Saturn is highlighted, many markets may be in the process of making lows in price. If instead they are making a high, then something may trigger investors' fears of loss or loss of profit, and thus selling begins and markets reverse to the downside. Saturn stations, retrograde and direct dates, have proven to be very strong reversal signals, especially when primary cycle highs or lows are due within an orb of 10 trading days. Neptune retrograde is also a strong reversal signature. In fact, in our studies published in The Ultimate Book on Stock Market Timing, Volume 3, Geocosmic Correlations to Trading Cycles, its historical frequency to primary cycles was a whopping 86%. That is one of the highest geocosmic signatures we discovered for stock indices. But it also has a strong correlation to rallies in the gold market. There is a different character to Neptune's stationary than Saturn, however. Whereas Saturn demands accountability and proof before trusting, Neptune does not. Neptune is much more vulnerable, sensitive, and prone to be easily influenced by the crowd such as the media. This is a time when con artists, manipulators, and propagandists may prey upon the vulnerable, the naive. For under Neptune's presence, people tend to be more gullible. This is therefore a time when false rumors abound, and fact-checkers will be busier than usual, plus or minus ten days. The lesson is to not believe everything you hear or read unless it can be verified. People may try to convince you of their views and needs without complete disclosure of all of the facts that you need to make an informed decision. And it is possible that the effort to convince others of their narratives involves intentional untruths as well.
In the financial markets, Saturn and Neptune turning retrograde close in time to one another has a strong correlation to major moves in stocks, gold, and crude oil. In terms of politics, it heightens the possibility of errors, paranoia, confusion, bumbling, and being caught in a lie. For traders, this is a time to recognize whether a market move is the result of a rumor or a fact. If it's a rumor, the move may be short-lived. In the trading community, the saying goes, buy the rumor, sell the fact. But it can apply to one's personal life, too, especially in matters of the heart. It can arouse a feeling of infatuation and unbridled euphoria about something or someone. But does it have legs it can really stand on? That is what Saturn wants to know. So together, Saturn and Neptune can exhibit a scene of popping a bubble. Don't fall in love with the bubble or its trouble. Fall in love with virtue. The former, the bubble, may have a thrilling beginning. The latter, virtue, has a happier ending, which is really what Saturn and Neptune wish for. And what a beautiful way and beautiful application to end this newsletter. And if you saw the news coming out of Texas of the megachurch pastor that had to be forced out of his congregation this past week, everything that was just said in that section fell true there as well. Wow. Incredible. From the you can't make this up department, there you go. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you back on Monday for a full week of podcasts ahead. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend.